Thank you. So the reason I'm here today is that two years ago, my friend Vic called me and he told me about a worldwide competition to win a million dollar prize. Vic and I studied aerospace engineering together in the Netherlands, and we had been daydreaming of all sorts of interesting projects we could do after graduating. But this was the ultimate project. This was a prize, it was sponsored by Boeing, and the goal of the prize was to create a vehicle that not even big aerospace corporations had made before. A personal flying device for one person. So this would be something that one person could just get into and fly from anywhere they are to another place. Of course, it would have to be fast and quiet, but there was one, one requirement that really interested us as engineers. It had to be very compact, so able to land in a parking space. If you think about what kinds of vehicles could carry a person, you have, on the one hand, helicopters and airplanes. Well, those can go quite a large distance, so that's useful, but you'd never imagine being able to land one in a parking space or in your, ba in your backyard. On the other hand, you have quadcopters, and you could make one big, and people have made them big enough to put people on top of them, but you're not gonna get performance, and you're not gonna be able to get very far. So the technical challenge for us, which was very interesting, was could we make something in this region of ultra compact and high enough range to be useful? And well, we were students, but we had a lot of friends that thought this was very interesting. So we got our friends together and we got an old classroom at the, at the university and some whiteboards and we started to talk about our ideas. Um, in the daytime, we would analyze all the technical requirements for such a vehicle, and over dinner we debated what are the pros and cons of each one. After several weeks of this, all of our ideas boiled down into one concept. Now when you see it, you're probably gonna think this is something so crazy that only a bunch of students would think of this. <laughs> but that's the point. So, to start off, we had three very unconventional uh, decisions about our design. First off, the rider rides as if they're riding a motorcycle. Now, of course, that helps to make the vehicle more compact. It's a very compact position. Second of all, the entire vehicle rotates 90 degrees during flight. We need to have the biggest wings possible to make our aircraft efficient, but when we're landing, we wanna take the smallest footprint possible. So by landing on our tail, we land uh, exactly smaller, in the space, smaller than in the space of a parking space. The final thing that we wanted to do was we wanted to make our vehicle electric. There were two main reasons for this. The first was reliability, and the second is connected, is as we only had a short period of time, just over a year in order to actually build and test this vehicle, we wanted something where we could make small prototypes quickly and then scale that up. With electric, that's possible. So we made a technical report of all of these ideas and we submitted it into the competition. And shortly after, we learned that out of hundreds of submissions, ours had been among the top 10. That meant that we had $20,000 to start prototyping our idea. That was super exciting for us. Um, and even more exciting was the attention that it got from other students at our university. And these students came to us and they started asking us questions. And before long, we had a team full of 40 students on our hands. And we had to get structured very fast. So we, we structured ourselves into departments for the powertrain, the control systems, the structures. And several students took an entire gap year off to start working on this project and managing the other students. We learned a whole lot from this experience. One of the big things that we really learned during this process was that students have an amazing sense of personal ownership of the projects that they're working on. So we found that even if someone who had only studied these things in class um, was given the task, that they would be able to really devote themselves to designing a new, uh, a new motor that was necessary or a propeller or, for example, when we started with the structures department, 
we knew we had, we had to design an aircraft where the structure itself would be actually lighter than the person. And that would require advanced carbon fiber manufacturing techniques. Well, our structures team didn't have this kind of experience. But knowing that it had to be done, they went to the right people, and they approached the professors, and they approached companies that had, uh, they, they secured workshops with companies, and they acquired the experience that they needed. Another huge challenge on our hands was the, the design of an electric propulsion system and the aerodynamics of this vehicle. In order to really show that this could work, we had to design, the students had to design several test setups. So for example, they designed a half-scale wind tunnel test setup that would, be, uh, that would be able to predict the lift and drag of the aircraft. On top of that, we had to do our first propeller test. This was definitely the most difficult test of the phase, and this required several students working for days in a freezing cold bunker in the middle of the winter before we finally got it working. But that finally went extremely well. And on the software side, we had several, uh, several scale models to show that the avionics and that the autopilot of the system worked. Of course, we had a lot of these and we crashed a lot of them, but eventually uh, we got it to a point where we were really happy with how much we had learned and accomplished. So with all of this knowledge, we submitted another follow-up report um, showing all of the tests and things that we had learned. And we heard back that we had been among the top five. And that meant that we had now $50,000 in funding, additionally, in order to start building the actual prototype of the vehicle. And that means that next year we'll take our vehicle to the United States in order to compete against the other four. What's most impressive about this phase for me is that the other four competitors were not run by students. They were either run by researchers or companies. So now, I would like to show you the vehicle that we're going to bring to the United States. So this is a picture from two weeks ago where we were finalizing the structures of the vehicle. Uh, here you can see just part of the shell which is being sanded. Uh, by now it's been assembled and painted. Um, so we're very excited for the first test flights which are gonna be happening in just a couple of weeks from now. I think that a lot of people would think that as a student team uh, that means that we have a disadvantage. Um, for me it's actually um, been quite a huge advantage in this type of a competition. Uh, first of all, as I showed, we were able to think of ideas that were out of the box and that uh, normally people wouldn't think of. Second of all, students have this really big personal ownership 
which allows them to really persevere through some of the difficult, uh, through some of the difficult times. And finally, we have another trick up our sleeves, which is that the enthusiasm of the students has really infected a lot of companies and businesses, and those businesses have become our sponsors and our teachers. And I hope in return we've also taught them some things about uh, the, not just the technical, but also uh, the way that we've managed this team and the way that we've grown throughout this time. So we believe that personal flight is definitely going to happen in the next decade. But also, most importantly, we believe that student innovation is going to be a huge part of that. And this is why. Thank you.